From Tight End University, George Kittle. Yeah! Hey! Hey! What's up, Happy boy? birthday to you! All right, we're not doing a whole song. Happy birthday, though, buddy. <laughs> How old are you? How are we doing? How old are you? 30. Come oh, on, buddy. Wow. Last night was a pretty good little birthday start, huh? Three tuds, felt good about it? Hey, three tuddies for each decade of my life. Why not, <laughs> baby? I don't know if you saw the graphic. You got the Randy Moss graphic all of a sudden, you know, because you had three catches, three touchdowns. You didn't have 163 yards, only 67, but who cares? What a night for you on primetime as you turn 30. Why do you think last night was a jump-off night for you offensively? This happened last year where there became a night where you went off, Brock Purdy, and you found it, and you went forever. This year, you haven't really had that day yet. Last night, why last night, you think, George? Um, you know what? We have a lot of really good football teams, <laughs> football players on our team. Sorry, my dad. My dad's volume is on. He's driving me to work. Hey, man, Bruce! Hello, man. How we doing? Bruce! Bruce! Bruce is driving me to work. Ah, let's see. We have a bunch of really good football players on this team, and, um, you know, a lot of mouths to feed, but the good thing about all those mouths is a bunch of really talented players, and so none of us are very selfish. Some guys are going to have great games some games. Some guys are not going to have a lot of catches some games. It just is what it is. Um, so I'm just happy that I had an opportunity to go out there and make those plays and go Shane and dial those up for me. Yeah, it looked awesome. Go ahead, AJ. How early in that game do you know that, hey, this, this could be a big night for me? Is, is it pretty early on? Um, you know what? I really liked our red zone package for me this week. We do those on Fridays. We had a couple in there, and we had like two that we had brought in from uh, last year's playoff game versus them, so I knew we were going to call those. Um, and, you know, when you score a touch on the opening drive, you're like, ah, well, why can't I get at least one more? And then you get another one, you're like, ah, why can't I get another one? And then it just kept happening and happening. So it's just a lot of fun out there with the boys, actually. Yeah, once you take the top off, the ball starts falling in the hoop a little bit more. After uh, a rush touchdown, not even your touchdown, you went over to the crowd and you displayed your undershirt. Now, is that undershirt every game or – just this game, and I, I couldn't read it that clearly. It might have just been sweat stains. Did you know that your shirt had that on underneath your, your jersey, the F dash 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 Dallas? Did you know that? Oh, oh wow. I think that was just on my loop, man. I put it on, you know, just wearing a T-shirt the game. <laughs> I don't know how that got on there. Uh, you know, I might have been mildly inspired by our guy Gary Plummer who wore that in, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the 94 NFC Championship game versus Dallas, so – um, it just there's some things that uh, um, that need to be worn for the franchise. I just, you know, I think it's just coincidence that I just happened to appear on my chest on uh, Sunday Night Football. Okay, yeah, we thought it would have been a coincidence. Yeah, because yeah, because there was like you sound like you were sneezing a little bit when you're trying to get the shirt up, mm -hmm. you know, and then you had your you had like a cramp where you had to stretch your arm down to make sure that it was really seen. It was crazy all the things that had to happen to make sure that shirt was seen. We appreciate it. Uh, last question for me, as you continue to drive to work with your old man, shout out to your dad, by the way, Hidden Pearls Podcast. Yeah. Shout out to, yeah, shout out, shout out. Yeah. I was very lucky to be a guest on there. Makes me feel better about my life. Speaking of making you feel better about your life, you guys got a quarterback who is phenomenal. I think the whole world's kind of coming around, still has some haters. Seventh round draft pick, people are thinking uh, at some point, water's going to have to find its level with him. What does he do every single week that makes you think to yourself, is this the greatest quarterback of all time? He's able to throw. He seems to be smarter than everybody. He's a cool guy. Is there anything that we don't notice that we haven't seen that maybe is a reason why he's so great right now, Kittle? You know, besides the only thing, uh, Kyle Brandt's theory of him being like a robot from Terminator, <laughs> the only thing you guys really miss is, is him charging into his locker before and after every single practice. <laughs> Um, besides that, you know, he's doing a great job. He just so, he's just so consistent every single Wednesday he's dialed in. And that's like our big install day. First, and second down passes, all these run cans, pressure cans, all this stuff to, you know, get the offense in the right, you know, looks. And he does a great job of that throughout walkthroughs, throughout practice. And he never has any MAs and it's an incredibly difficult offense. He does a great job with that. And I, you know, I really just think he had all these starts and all these reps and throughout college, he played at a really high level. He played at a low level sometimes. But at the end of the day, he played quarterback really well and just gave him an opportunity to succeed at this level with us in a system where Shanahan can dial up some plays for a bunch of skill positions who can all eat. And it's just when you're part of that offense, as long as you don't turn the ball over and you just complete some passes, the dogs are going to hunt, baby. <laughs> Feels like he's one of the boys, too. Accurate? 
Hey, bird dog's that boy. <laughs> yeah. He's like that. Yeah, it feels like it. He seems like a great leader. I love it. Uh, Darius has a question for you, George. Yeah, man. Uh, obviously, the offense, you guys make all the headlines, as you should, a bunch of dogs over there. But that defensive side of the ball, you know, with Robert Salah, Steve Wilkes, Demico Ryans, whoever's calling the shots, they don't miss a beat. What's it like practicing against those guys in training camp? And what's the vibe like with those guys? You know what? They're the worst at training camp, not going to lie. They're just the worst. I love our D-line, though. They're always great. And I will say this also, you know, for having an entire training camp without Nick Bosa wrecking havoc on our offense every play that he's not going against Trent Williams was good for our offense. I think that's one of the reasons that we have been able to click so early is because we were actually able to practice without having every play getting played. So that's nothing against our offensive tackles. Just that's how good Nick Bosa is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, our def- I mean, like, you look at our defensive line. We added Hargrave. He's been phenomenal. Armstead is having a wonderful year, and he's not getting any attention on it at all. But if you watch that tape, he just blows up that interior offensive line every single time. Ken Law is finding his stride. Nick Bosa is Nick Bosa. And then, you, I mean, Fred Warner, Trey Greenlaw, Oren Burks, our linebackers are playing at an incredibly high level. They're violent. They're physical. I mean, AJ, when you're a linebacker playing on Sunday Night Football, is there any better stat line than an interception, a forced fumble, and sack. a sack? No. I mean, I'd say Fred, I mean, Fred put it together at the right time. You could have zero tackles, too. It doesn't matter. If you have those <laughs> yeah. good. Uh, go ahead, AJ. George, is this a normal, like, uh, Victory Monday type deal where your dad drives you to work? And I would assume it's, you got to text him to, to pick you up when everything's done. You know, it's my birthday, so my whole family's in town. And uh, uh, my family takes a party bus to the games just because we usually have big crowds in. And so I rode the party bus with the family last night on the way home. Left the car at work, didn't, you know, feel like driving solo. Smart. So just needed a quick ride for my pops. You know, I had to celebrate the the man to Eddie Guerrero's birthday you know, today that. as well. So, hey. I didn't know you shared a birthday guy. with Eddie Guerrero. I know. Happy birthday, Eddie Guerrero. Thank, la, la Viva La Raza. Rest in peace, pal. Everybody's paying tribute to Eddie and everything he did. Shout out to you. I did not know. Ah, Ken Energy, huh? When are you getting back in WWE? When are you getting back in WWE? When? Uh, whenever it's available in a city near me, I'll be there every single time. There is no one like the WWE, the way they take care of us athletes. They are fantastic. And I just want to say, Pat, man, your life is so stupid, man. Dumbest. You got to go out there. Just get to go out there and just talk to the great people of Indianapolis, these great Midwest people, having a wonderful time. And then you get to watch John Cena tag team with L.A. Knight, the yeah. hottest of hot. Oh, my yeah. gosh. George, it was dumb. It was very, very dumb. It was one of the most oh, absurd. Hey, you get to sit next to Michael Cole, too, and that hating ass Corey Graves. <laughs> he is a little bit of a hating ass. Yep. He looked good, though. I don't know if you guys saw how good he looked. Pro- he always looked good. Clean. Proper. Great it, I mean, he was in great. Paul Heyman, two feet in front of me, too, for the entire If we're just going to start adding goats in there. Paul Heyman, have you seen this? I did not know this because I'm in the middle of football season. His hair is white. He looks terrible. He's wearing ill-fitting suits because Roman hasn't been around. Yeah. <laughs> I was out. So funny. I laughed like, so what hard. a professional. That's what I said. I said, bro, is everything okay? He goes, our tribal chief has not been around. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started, I just started like crying, <laughs> laughing. And uh, yeah, it was great to see everybody over there. I love them. And anytime I get the opportunity, to your point, anytime I get the opportunity to do some stuff with WWE, I'm going back. I missed the hell out of them. But I'm not in the middle of a potential goat run here as tight end for the San Francisco 49ers. Your team appears right now to be maybe the most dominant team, not only in the NFL, but in, like, the history. Your guys' end of the season last year, that NFC Championship game, I know it sucks. How much do you think that propelled you guys into this season to be like, hey, there's no messing around, there's no fugues, we're on a mission? Do you think that played any part of this, or what do you think about your team right now? No. I mean, like, it's hard to – I, you know, I hate talking about the NFC Championship game. We lost. Eagles won. It is what it is in circumstances. Everybody got hurt. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it is It is what it is. You know, we lost. They won. Uh, you know, if the same thing happened to them, I'm assuming that we probably would have won that game too. It is what it is. But I just think our team as a whole, when you win 12, 12 games straight and then you have something like that happen that's kind of out of your control, it's just like, all right, well, let's just hit the ground running and hit it harder than we did last year. And I think that's what we've done. And I just think that Brock's gotten more comfortable. We've added pieces on defense. And um, it's just fun to also when you have Ayuk, who's just dominated every training camp. He's dominated his uh, chemistry with, with Per Dog. Uh, Debo's Debo. Okay, Christian McCaffrey, I hope that – I don't gamble, but I hope that you guys have bet on a touchdown parlay for him for every week for 
um, I don't know, three and a half seasons. Yep. Like. Yeah, should, 14 straight weeks, I think, is what it is. So you should probably keep hammering that one home. <laughs> he's also more – I don't want to say he's more durable, but this year he's taking a lot of shots It's and just popping right back up. Have, is he more jocked than ever right now? Him and Bosa just kind of like – photosynthesize outside in the San Francisco sun. That's just what they do. It's crazy. They right Me and Juice are just sitting there practicing our golf swings, watching, like, working out, hanging out. They're just out there, like, just out there in the sun relaxing. It's amazing. They look amazing. They're playing amazing. Your team is hot. Ty has a question, though. I don't think he's happy. Yeah, George, I don't know if you're aware, but Iowa tight ends had five receiving touchdowns yesterday. And, listen, I know you're one of the founding fathers, but I'll be honest, it, as an Iowa boy, it pained me very much that you decided to go with tight end you instead of Iowa in the uh, introductions last night. Just curious, kind of what spurred that? Uh, <laughs> what what decision was behind that? Yikes. Was it because you said, "Hey, I don't want to piss Brock off and and you know kind of shit on him, letting him know that he went to the you know the kind of bottom rung school <laughs> in the state"? Obviously, Iowa being the superior program. But uh, what what was behind that decision? Can you just kind of enlighten me a little bit? Well, as one of the founding fathers of tight end university, man, I just want to make sure our message is getting out there that all tight ends are a part of the university. And so I'm just going to be one that's kind of leading the charge, tip of the spear, as you may say. Um, that's all it is. Just letting everybody, all these tight ends know that we're all part of tight end university and you just got to say it with your chest. Yeah. And what tight end university is doing, it feels like, huh? Tight ends are all, hey. Yeah, they're uh -huh. going. Hey, going right now. You feel it. Are you kidding me, man? I love watching. We had so many highlights just yesterday. All these tight ends scoring touchdowns, spiking it, celebrating. It's fun too, man. Like I love when tight ends score and they don't have a celebration plan. It's just how many guys can I hug in the end zone? <laughs> and I just absolutely love that mindset. Just hugs and spikes, baby. That's what tight good, ends good do. Ball. That's what tight ends do. Tone has a question for you. George, I think I saw, was there some worry, speaking of tight ends, when you saw the Lions run the reverse flea flicker pass? down the sideline was there some worry did you know that you guys were going to run that last night yeah so like we've had it installed since like week eight of last year we just never called it and i was sitting there it's like huh i'm watching the porta play actually i'm sitting there with my agent who's also sam's agent he goes oh look sam just had a second touch i'm like yeah we have that play in tonight i hope we still call it because <laughs> you know like sometimes coaches see stuff like oh well, we can't call that now because they called that and i was very thankful that we did call it. and i think i had like three more yards on it but Sam had a, I mean, what a day for that guy. <laughs> what a rookie. Just ball, just balling out. Uh, nine more feet, I think. <laughs> so. You know, if you think. <laughs> I do appreciate the fact that that can get ruined. That happens to, like, fake punts and stuff like that. Yeah. You see it run one time by another team. It's like, all right, now every team is going to prepare for that. Throw it out. Such a good play. And I also like the fact that you're like, people are telling us that we stole that from the Lions. Please. Okay. Week eight last year. Mm -hmm. Had that thing in for a while. We ain't doing that. Although, Ben Johnson over there uh -huh. is a creative guru. He's thinking like Kyle Shanahan. Okay, here's a question. Kyle Shanahan, every day, is he just thinking of new plays, awesome plays? What's he like on a day-to-day, -day, and why do you think his offense has been so effective? Because this is what people are saying. The people that hate Brock Purdy say any quarterback you put in Kyle Shanahan's offense, it'll work with those weapons. Now, there's a quarterback that's on the other team last night. Don't even have to talk about it. But that's why people talk about Shanahan's offense. Do you guys recognize that? And why do you think Shanahan is so good at designing plays for your team to succeed with? Um, well, I will say it's like being a part of Kyle's offense for the last seven years, it has evolved and changed drastically. Um, like there are similarities. We run outside zone. We run gap scheme. We run play action. But, like, the majority of plays that we used to call, we don't really call them anymore. We call, like, uh, I would say, like, variations of them. But the creativeness to them is just – it's it's changed a lot. And what, to people that think any quarterback could play in this offense, you guys should see our installs and the things that quarterbacks have to deal with every single day when they look at these things. And, Kyle, I, we play have a Sunday night game, and I get, like, six texts from my tight ends coach saying, hey, we just added six plays on for the game tonight at, like, noon. I'm just like, oh, wait, I wouldn't get to practice these, but I'm glad that, you know, we have these in and – Yes, I may have ran these three to four weeks ago, but would have loved to practice them. And just for Brock to be able to handle that, look at that call sheet, handle however many plays it is, feels like 250 plays, and then go out there and not think and just play ball. Not everybody can do that. There's a lot of guys that go out there and they think about things. They think about the lights. They think about, oh, wow, they have a really good defense. Oh, maybe I'm not this good. Maybe I can't do this. Brock just goes out there and plays football. And that is something, and that is an ability that not everybody in the NFL has. And that's what makes him better 
than just a system quarterback. I mean, I was a system tight end for a while until I just had to continue to play at a high level. But, you know, I think I think all the hate really comes from just being in an Iowa State cycle. I think that's what it is. It's just well so- said. Yeah, well, Iowa State <laughs> certainly has not had a lot of good things said about it on this program because Ty – is as obnoxious as you could be as an Iowa Hawkeye fan. <laughs> but you just said something fascinating there that doesn't happen on a regular basis, adding plays late in the week. A lot of people just, Wednesday, here's what we're doing. Thursday, here's what we're doing. Friday, we're working on everything we just worked on. Walk through what we just worked on. Kyle, you have to have a certain type of player to be able to handle that, not just a quarterback, but everywhere. John Lynch deserves some credit, I guess, for finding all you freaks. <laughs> I guess that is... Yeah, I mean, dude, like, our Kyle's changing plays, um, and, like, we'll have our whole install on Wednesday, first and second down pass plays, first and second down runs, and then we'll add some more. So then Thursdays are our third downs and our short yardage stuff, and then we'll add some more in or we'll change some stuff that he didn't like. And then Friday's kind of a little bit mix of that, too. We have, like, this big run tape with the whole offense where he kind of talks about the run plays that he likes, what he doesn't like, what he's going to add, what he's going to change. And, like the, like, the core part of the install it stays the same. But there's just little ones that he throws in there. And then, like, he made up a play last night in the middle of the third quarter. Just made it up. He goes, hey, this is what we're going to call. And I was like, awesome. Incomplete pass. Wasn't a great idea. (laughs) (laughs) They're they're not all home runs, but it is what it is. He's trying out there, and I just appreciate that. But when you have weapons like we have, Kyle just does such a great job about putting our best players in positions to succeed. Whether it's Debo on an end cut, me running down the sideline, IU getting a one-on-one matchup versus a corner, Christian getting a late – Get Christian in a late choice route, like against a linebacker. That's all it is. He's putting us in positions to succeed. And Brock has to piece it all apart. Go ahead, AJ. George, when we watch your offense play, a lot of people always say, oh, yeah, why doesn't every team do all this? And I'm talking of, like, of your pre-snap motions, shifts, like all the little jet motions, whatever it does to get the defense kind of on their heels. Can you talk a little bit about how much you guys actually have to work on that? Because it's not like, oh, hey, yeah, we're going to be one of those teams that all of a sudden does all the pre-snap stuff. Like you have to do that millions of times, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, like, that's one of the things, the, like, the variations, how this offense has evolved. It's just, like, it used just to be a, a motion pre-snap, the wide is going to go over here just to get, you know, from a two-by-two two to a three-by-one. Then we started doing all, like, I don't know, we call them plane motions, delta motions, where the wide receiver just running behind to make it look like a jet sweep. And then you have the cheat motions, like what Tyreek uh, does in, with the Dolphins. We do it here now. We added our spirit. Spirit Bros motions. That's when me and Juice are running sideways, sideways, Spirit helping bros. each other out. You guys Spirit doing, Bros Airlines. You, you go, you go, oh, Spirit Airlines. Got it. Not Spirit. I thought Spirit like excitement. You're saying Spirit Airlines. Got Spirit, it. Spirit well, motion. no. So like all the motions are planes, right? So Spirit, Delta. Mm. Oh. Like yeah. yeah. You have to make it make sense because there's a lot of stuff going on. And so like there are is a lot of practice and stuff in that. You, you have to get through all the walkthroughs because every single play, like, I don't know, 80% of our plays have motions or different things on it. And so just being in the system for a while, and then Kyle's gotten better at installing that and explaining it to guys. So we have younger guys may be able to pick it up. And when you can do all that stuff, you take like a three, you can come out in a three by one. I can motion. Then we can send a wide receiver in a motion right pre-snap. And then juice can also motion. And all of a sudden it's a three by one on the opposite side. And the defense is talking, trying to make all these adjustments. And she's like, oh, wait, I have this guy. Wait, no, you have this guy. And someone's running on the seam scot-free. And the ball's being snapped right now. And uh, the quarterback just so happens to be a guy who can decipher all of your mess-ups that are happening in real time. That is a weapon. Yeah, you guys are having a good time over there, it appears. Yeah, as you should. Last question here, and we can't thank you enough for your time on your birthday here. Connor, man. Yeah, George, you probably don't know this, but most NFL teams try and get better every week. Uh, And with the 49ers, it just feels like there's no area of your team where you can get better. How do you guys actually go into every single game week and think, like, we got to change this, we got to change that? And then with all these dominant wins, do you and Trent Williams and McCaffrey and Bosa still do your post-game break? downs of what they were doing or do you guys just say yeah there's nothing to talk about we just beat the hell out of that team let's go home and have some fun um you know what watching the tape this was actually i watched it last night and in my opinion one of our cleanest games in the run game which makes me really happy um i thought we were flying around use check had a phenomenal game our off the tackles were playing well um but you still see stuff like we install plays for them to be home runs, especially when you have a guy carrying the ball like Christian McCaffrey or Debo Samuel. And so we want these outside zone plays. We want these gap schemes. We want to be able to account for everybody to get our, our footwork right, our hand placement right, our technique right on rollouts, you know, good on the inside shirt. 
So like we want to, we're going to continue to get better at that stuff so that you see more 50, 60, 70 yard runs from our guys in the back just because of how talented they are. And also like when you watch dark tape, I don't know how many other teams have wide receivers blocking downfield oh, with the aggression. 30 yards, 40 yards down the field, George. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a mindset and the boys have it and it's fun to play with. Hell yeah. Well, you're fun to chit chat with and watch play football. Three tuds last night, just turned 30. Fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> you should see. Sure, so oh. close. Oh. Yeah. Shoot. We knew one was coming, yeah, George. Yeah, we did. Okay. My bad, guys. We knew it's your birthday. Okay, love. <laughs> do you want another? Three tuds last night. You want a couple more? You want a couple? No, no, no. I want AJ to say it for me. Yes. First birthday, Go AJ. Go ahead, AJ. No, I'm good, George. I'm good. Oh, I'm good. Oh, you know what? That is that you know what? That's the least surprising thing coming from an Ohio State Buckeyes. Yeah. So <laughs> really oh. big just so squishy. Yeah, goodness you, gracious. Hey, enjoy oh, your birthday. Enjoy work. We don't know how you guys are gonna get better, but we can't wait to see how you do. Uh you're the man, and it, we can't thank you enough for your time here, pal. Hey, what? Wow. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Love George you, Kittle. See you, boys. you too, buddy. Hey, George.